Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. We are continuing the discussion of uh, Bijaganita of Bhaskara Acharya. So, this talk will be continue, we will be continuing with the analysis of the Chakravala process or the Chakravala method. First, I will remind you what we discussed yesterday, the basic algorithm of the Chakravala method. Then, I will summarize the analysis made by Krishna Swami Iyengar. Then, we will go to the currently known or what is taught in the textbooks for the solution of this equation. The equation x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1 is known as the Pell's equation. How it was solved in uh, Europe in the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. Then I will compare the uh, solution of Bhaskara or the older Chakravala method of India with the Brauncker, Wallis, Euler, Lagrange method of solution. Finally, I will say something about the optimality of the Chakravala method. So, as I said, the Kutaka condition which was there in the Chakravala method was replaced by the simpler condition that p i plus p i plus 1 is divisible by k i by Krishna Swami Iyengar. And so, the algorithm Chakravala algorithm that we are using will be in this form to solve x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1. Remember, d is a non-square integer and you want to find out x and y in integers. So, you start with initial values x naught is equal to 1, y naught is equal to 0, k naught is equal to 1, p naught is equal to 0. In any step, x i, y i, k i such that x i squared minus d y i squared is equal to k i, find the p i plus 1 such that these two conditions are satisfied p i plus p i plus 1 is divisible by k i, p i plus 1 squared minus d is minimum. Then once p i plus 1 is found, you can find out y i plus 1, k i plus 1 and x i plus 1 and for that use this auxiliary quantity a i whose significance we will see in a minute, a i is defined as p i plus p i plus 1 by k i and epsilon 1 is plus 1 if d is greater than p i squared and epsilon i is less minus 1 if d is less than p i square. So, this x i plus 1 and y i plus 1 that you have calculated satisfy x i plus 1 squared minus d y i plus 1 squared is k i plus 1. Now, the k i plus 1 value could be anything. So, you have to keep iterating the algorithm till you get plus 1 in which case the problem is solved, but you can always do bhavana if you find minus 1 or plus minus 2 or plus minus 4, you can always do bhavana and go to the solution. So, this is the Chakravala algorithm that we discussed in the last class. So, to recollect take x squared minus 67 y squared is equal to 1. So, here the initial step is x is 1, y is 0, p is 0, k is 1. So, next step p i plus p i plus 1 is divisible by k i and p i squared is closest to 67. Then we have to choose this to be 8. Then 8 squared minus 67 by 1 will be minus 3. So, the next step p i and k i will be 8 and minus 3 and if you use the, the formula I gave you x i and y i will turn out to be 8 and 1. This of course, the trivial thing 8 squared minus 67 into 1 squared is minus 3. Next step, so 8 you have to add p i plus 1 such that it is divisible by 3. So, possibilities are 4, 7 and 10 of them 7 squared 49 is closest to 67 choose 7. So, 7 squared minus 67 divided by minus 3 is 6. So, in this case you get p and k to be 7 and 6. You can fill up this a i column also, a naught is 0 plus 8 by 1 that is 8, a, uh, a 1 is 8 plus 7 15 divided by 3 that is 5. So, in the next step from 7 you have to find out p i plus 1. So, it is it should be divisible, the sum should be divisible by 6, 5 and 11 are the possibilities, 5 square is closer to 67 then 11 squared choose 5, then you will get 5 and minus 7. So, at this point you have 90 squared minus 67 into 11 squared is minus 7. Next step you go, you will immediately get a k of minus 2. So, to 5 you have to add a p i plus 1 
such that the sum is divisible by 7, possibilities are 2, 9 and 16. Amongst them, 9 has the square closest to 67. So, you put 9, then 9 squared minus 67 divided by minus 7 is minus 2. So, you have reached the shape of minus 2, you can do bhavana at this point 221 square minus 67 into 27 square is minus 2. You do the bhavana with 221 and 27, you obtain the final solution 48842 square minus 67 into 5967 square is equal to 1. So, let us summarize how Krishna Swami Iyengar analyzed this algorithm. He proved that this process always leads to k is equal to 1. He also showed that the process is different from what is known as the Euler Lagrange method, which is based upon the simple continued fraction expansion of root. I will explain all these things. So, now first step, let us start with x i squared minus d y squared is equal to k i. Think of an auxiliary equation like this p i plus 1 squared minus d into 1 squared is p i plus 1 squared minus d. Do the bhavana of these two, then you will get this product on the right hand side, right. But take this product to the, the take this k i to the denominator, then you get an equation like this. If you divide the product of these two by k i squared, then you will get an equation like this. So, by doing just the bhavana of these two equations, you have obtained this. You can recognize these are the quantities appearing in the steps of the Chakravala equation. So, the first thing is to show that the quantities that appear in this algorithm are all well defined and non-negative. So, that was the first thing that we have to do when we analyze the algorithm like this. So, what can be shown is it is very simple. If we assume that x i, y i and k i are mutually prime, that means they have no common divisors. And if we choose p i plus 1 such that y i plus 1 is equal to y i p i plus 1 plus x i by mod k is an integer, that was the Kutaka version of the Chakravala algorithm that the first condition was put in the Kutaka way. This is chosen to be an integer by the algorithm. Then you can show, assuming that x i y i k i are prime, then you can show by this algebraic relation that x i plus 1 and k i plus 1 are also both integers. So, that is the first thing. And if you write the algorithm for the next step, you will get an equation like this and that equation can be simplified into this form, which will show you that is a i plus 1 or p i plus 2 plus p i plus 1 by k i plus 1, that is these have to be integers. So, Krishna Swami Iyengar's equivalent version is just obtained by second iteration of the algorithm. Therefore, this was the, this was the first two points in Krishna Swami Iyengar's proof. He showed first that the algorithm is well defined that these quantities are all integers. If you start with uh, an initial situation, then he showed that the Kutaka condition is equivalent to a condition like this. So, this algebraic relation shows you that a i is an integer if and only p i plus p i plus 1 by k i plus 1 is an integer and that is what gives you the equivalence between the two. Then comes the proof that this always converges to k is equal to 1, that is somewhat more complicated. That is based upon what is known as the theory of quadratic forms, I will not tell you in detail. A quadratic form a b c is something like this a x square plus 2 b x y plus c y square. Krishna Swami Iyengar is using this k i is p i plus 1 and k i plus 1 to make a quadratic form and that p i plus 1 square minus k i k i plus 1 is equal to d. Two quadratic forms are equivalent if b squared minus a c is the same for both of them. So, you have a class of all quadratic forms of the form k i p i plus 1 k i plus 1 such that they have this discriminant d. Then he de defined a quadratic form to be a Bhaskara form when this kind of a condition is satisfied. And now in the Chakravala, what is happening? You start with a k naught and a p naught, then you go to p 1 first, from that you will find k 1 also. So, in the Chakravala, you will successively get successive quadratic forms. So, the successor of a Bhaskara form by doing Chakravala process, Krishna Swami Iyengar showed is also a Bhaskara form. And then he even showed that you can start with any value of k 
and do chakravala you will eventually come to a value of k which is less than root d and later on you will move within the region k less than root d and p less than 2 root d. So, both k s and p s are bounded by root d and 2 root d and k and p are integers and if they are bounded by root d and 2 root d after some time they have to repeat in a cycle. So, already the cyclic property of the algorithm is proved. Finally, he showed that the amongst the set of all equivalent uh, cycles of uh, by doing the Chakravala process, the Bhaskara forms go in a cycle. He showed that any two cycles of Bhaskara form are not equivalent and all equivalent Bhaskara forms com come in the same cycle. To do that proof, he used the older proofs that were done by Gauss for quadratic forms for what was known as the Gauss forms and therefore, he was able to show that you start with any k whatsoever, you start with any x i, any y i such that any k is there, x i squared minus d y i squared is equal to k i, go on doing Chakravala, you will always first come to a value of k less than root d and eventually you come to the value 1 and so this was the proof of Krishna Swami Iyengar. Now, we quickly go to the Euler Lagrange method. So, what is the history of this? So, in 1657, Fermat, the famous French mathematician, he posed a challenge to the British mathematicians. First, he wrote to his friend Renical de Bessy saying that, can you solve these two equations 61 x squared plus 1 is equal to y squared and 109 x squared plus y is 1 is equal to y squared for x and y in integers. Already you see that the 61 x squared is coming there. And within a couple of months, he wrote this as a problem and sent it as a challenge to mathematicians in France, Belgium and England. This question was the same thing, can you solve the equation x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1 in integers. And he said, people know this kind of an equation, but the important thing is to put the restriction that you want solution in integers. And this is the birth of the theory of numbers in modern mathematics as Andre Weil says that this was the birth of theory of numbers essentially the problem. Now, uh, it was sent to England, William Blomker was the president of Royal Society and his friend John Wallace uh, was the, the professor in Cambridge uh, prior to Newton. So, both of them wrote down the solution, first they wrote down the rational solution that Brahmagupta had written down in 628 and sent it to Fermat. Fermat said, you are cheating, I had asked you for integral solution, rational solution is trivial. So, then of course, they sat down and worked out the integral solutions. Fermat had asked for four particular cases. Uh, to Prenical DBC had asked for d is equal to 61, d is equal to 109. So, he had posed the problem for 149, 109 and 433. He knew that they are going to involve large number of steps. So, to check that you are proficient in Chakravala, you solve the Chakravala for all these, uh, the uh, uh, Varga Prakriti equation for all these five examples. 61, four examples, right? D is equal to 61, 109, 439, is it? What was it? Uh, 433, and what is the other one? 149 and 433. If you do that, so just this visa already gives you solutions which go to trillions the order of magnitude of x. So, the solution was communicated by Brownker and Wallis in letters and then Wallis published all this in 1657 uh, in Latin and later on he wrote a famous book on algebra in 1685 where this solution was put in that algebra equation came in Latin. It is one of the earliest science books in English, Wallis algebra written in 1685. Now, Fermat of course, uh, wrote to the English mathematician saying that he willingly and joyfully acknowledges the validity of their solutions, but privately he complained to his friend Huygens that they had cheated, they had not given him a general proof that they were asking. And he said this proof must be based upon the method of descent. Fermat proved very little in his uh, long career, but he suggested a lot of theorems for which he wrote in the footnote saying I have a proof which is too long to be communicated here and many of them were based upon the method of design. Now, Euler in 1730 starts again this uh, his journey into the same equation. It is like Kuttaka. 
starting from larger numbers coming down to smaller numbers. Kutaka is the uh, standard method of descent. Euler in 1730 describes Wallis method and ascribes it to John Pell. And so, naming of this equation as Pell's equation is due to Euler. Euler wrote a famous book on algebra and where he called it Pell's equation and that name has stuck. And uh, he shows that first Euler starts showing that there are infinite number of solutions. Then in 1759, he gives a method for solving based upon the simple continued fraction expansion of root d and he also gives a table of solutions from 2 to 120 for this. And in 1764, Euler rediscovered the Bhavana principle. He called it the elegant, most elegant theorem, elegant as elegantissimum, meaning tara tama as we say in Sanskrit. So, this is the most elegant theorem. And uh, in 1768 to 70, Lagrange wrote a series of papers where he proved everything that Euler had done. So, the Euler method became well established and proved by 1770. So, what is the method? So, what is a simple continued fraction? So, normally a naught plus 1 by a 1 plus 1 by a 2 plus 1 by etcetera further division like that is called a continued fraction. It is called a simple continued fraction if only ones appear here a naught a 1 a 2 are all integers they are positive after the first one the first integer can be negative. So, there are various ways of denoting because this way of writing it will take too much space. So, one way of denoting it is by writing it this way, another way of denoting it is by putting that plus in the denominator. It is typographically inconvenient in uh, typewriters, but uh, while writing it is quite easy. Now, how to get a continued fraction associated with any real number? Just uh, pay, uh, pay some attention to this. The first partial quotient, these are called partial quotients. The first partial quotient a naught is just the integral part of alpha. What is the integral part of alpha? If the number is 1.3, integral part of that is 1. If the number is 1.9999, the integral part of that is still 1. Now, subtract integral part of alpha from alpha. So, that will lie between 0 and 1. Take 1 over that, take the reciprocal of that, that will be much more than 1. That is called that alpha 1. Take the integral part of alpha 1, call it a 1. And now, alpha 1 minus the integral part of alpha 1, take the reciprocal of it. This again a number larger than 1. Take the integral part of that alpha 2, that is a 2. So, that way you start getting your a naught, a 1, a 2, etcetera. a naught, a 1, a 2 are called partial quotients. Alpha 1, alpha 2 are called complete quotients. So, let us try this example 149 by 17. We want to express this as continued fraction. So, basically this is 8 plus 1 over <coughs> no, uh, 120, no, 9, 8 only, uh, 80 plus uh, 136, so 13 by 17, right. So, now write 1 over, uh, invert this, so this 1 over you are seeing some similarity with the, what we were doing earlier. So, this will be 8 plus 1 over 1 is it, ah, 13 plus 1 plus 1 over mm, 3 plus 1 over 1, something like this, 8 1, 3 4 I am saying getting, uh, where is the 4, oh yes. So, this how it will look by mutual division you can get the continued fraction for any rational number and if it is a rational number the continued fraction terminates and if it is an irrational number it does not terminate. Here are two irrational numbers which have a nice continued fraction 1 plus root 5 by 2 called the golden ratio its continued fraction is 1 1 1 1 1 1 e the base of natural logarithms 
has a nice continued fraction 2 1, 2 1 1, 4 1 1, 6 1 1, 8 1 1, etcetera. Unfortunately, pi does not have a nice continued fraction. Uh, calculating the 10,000th partial quotient of the continued fraction of pi is as difficult as calculating the 10,000 decimal place of pi. So, they are equally uh, random. <coughs> now, this you have a continued fraction like this, you stop it at any point, then that will become a rational number, you calculate it, it can be written as a j by b j, that is called a convergent of the continued fraction. So, these convergents satisfy recurrence relations, these are essentially what is there in the Baldi process of Arya Bhatta, this calculating the convergent backwards is the Baldi, these recurrence relations are the essentially the Baldi relations this a naught a 1 a 2 are the quotients that come in the mutual divisions of the bhajya and bhajaka in kutaka. And this convergence have to satisfy this property a j b j minus 1, a j minus 1 b j is minus 1 to the power j plus 1. So, a j b j are obtained if you have a continued fraction, whether it is terminating or not terminating, you terminate at any point you get the corresponding convergence. So, those will be rational approximations to the irrational number, null number that you have. They will be optimal in some sense. So, the convergence of this are, so you can straight away see, if you terminate it here, it is 8, then 8 plus 1 over 1. So, 8 by 1 is the first convergent, 9 by 1 is the next convergent, if you terminate it here. If you terminate it in the place 3, you will have 35 by 4. And if you go all the way, it is 149 by 47, uh, 17, sorry, uh, whatever we start it. Thank you. So, these are approximations to 149 by 17. They are in some sense best approximations. A later Kerala book called Karana Padhati gives very nice algorithms for doing this convergence and uses them as approximations because the number of civil days in a maha yuga is in the trillions, the number of solar years in a maha yuga is also in the 43 lakh 20 thousand years into 1000 and you need ratios of these to calculate the positions of sun. So, those numbers fractions are very huge and you can always approximate them by fractions with smaller denominators and the best approximations are what are provided by the continued fraction expansion of it and Karana Padhati excels in giving this you making use of this uh, continued traction kind of result. <coughs> yes sir? 9 by 2 or 9 by 9 1? By two. Oh, 9 by 1 sir. One, one. Ah, exactly. 8 plus 1 by 1, 1 plus 8 plus 1 by 1. Okay. What I have written in the slide is always more accurate than what I do on the board, which is done at the spur of the moment. Another interesting thing, just the connection with Kutaka, this previous convergent we wrote this relation a j b j minus 1 minus a j minus 1 b j is minus 1 to the power j minus 1. So, you have the relation, you use this convergent 35 by 4, 149 into 4 minus 35 into 17 is equal to 1. So, for this 149 by 17 and 35 by 4, this will be the two solutions for the Kutaka equation involving 149 and 17. So, the entire continued fraction theory is, is as old as Aryabhata's. Arya Bhatiya basically, the entire thing is there. Now, coming to our problem, solution of the Varga Prakriti, Euler showed that square root of d can always be written as a periodic continued fraction. Periodic means at the end of this, whatever I put in the bar will keep repeating itself. In fact, we saw one nice uh, quadratic cell which had a periodic uh, continued fraction expansion the period started right at the beginning, right, this is equal to 1 comma 1 comma. So, it is nothing but 1 bar, it is a period starts at the right at the beginning. So, all quadratic sets have a periodic continued fraction and vice versa and the root d is always of this form with the last entry 2 a naught, if this is a entry is a naught, this is called the period, the period can be odd, period can be even and the penultimate convergent here at the end of the period will give you the solution for minus 1 if the period is odd, 
it will give the solution for plus 1 if the period is even. If you obtain the solution for minus 1, you do bhavana and get the solution for plus 1. So, if the period is odd, then you will get the solution for x squared minus d y squared is equal to minus 1 at the end of the period. So, let us take this example x squared minus 13 y squared is equal to this is the given example given in Euler's book square root of 3 is 3 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 6. This bar means now again the same thing will start here, it will go on repeating itself. It is an irrational number, so continued fraction is infinite, but it is periodic. You have to take this convergent, convergent at this point 3 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1, stop it here, then you will have a 4 by b 4, which is you can see to be 18 by 5. In fact, we saw this solution yesterday while discussing the equation x squared minus 13 y squared is equal to minus 1. The solution by Bhaskara was also this 18 x 5. Now, doing bhavana of this with itself, you will obtain the solution for k is equal to 1. So, this is Euler method or we can call it Euler Lagrange method. Lagrange wrote down all the proofs. Now, from this simple continued fractions, you should go to something called semi regular ones. How are they different? Instead of only plus 1 occurring here, plus 1 and minus 1 can both occur here. That is called a semi regular continued fraction and certain mathematical conditions which we can ignore, something like this should be satisfied. So, the convergence of the semi regular continued fraction will involve this epsilon in their recurrence relation. We saw this recurrence relation in Chakravala then itself. So, so first thing that Krishnaswamy Iyengar did was to show that the Bhaskara method or the Chakravala method at the time of Krishnaswamy Iyengar he was not aware that there were people prior to Bhaskara who had done the uh, Chakravala method. He of course mentions that Bhaskara is saying only the Chakravala midam jaguhu. So this must be some method which was earlier known to Indians. So, he showed that the Chakravala method corresponds to expanding root d as a semi regular continued fraction a naught a 1 a 2 are all given by our quantities familiar p i p i plus 1 by mod k i this epsilon i was also defined there. So, you go back to that table you can immediately write down there. So, root 67 the Bhaskara's continued fraction. a naught is 8 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus uh, which column I am writing uh, 8 5 2 1 1 7 ok. It goes up to 16 ok that is fine. So, 8 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. Oh, I am writing down the Euler Lagrange. So, I am ok. This is let go back to Chakravala. This mouse is refusing to cooperate with me. <laughs> ok, give it the due time. So, 8 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus minus 1 over 9 minus 1 over 2 plus I will continue writing it here. One by two, one by five, one by sixteen. So, this is the semi regular continued fraction expansion. Notice that the two minus ones appearing here.
and of course, it is the whole thing is periodic that will keep repeating itself by 2, 2, 9, 2, 2, 5, 16. Forward movement is fine. So, first thing Krishna Swami Iyengar showed was that the Chakravala method you can immediately write down the square root of d as a continued fraction. Next thing he pointed out that the simple continued fraction algorithm can be viewed as a, a similar to Chakravala algorithm only you change the condition of Bhaskara that modulus of p plus 1 squared minus d being minimum you change it to the condition that d should be greater than p i plus 1 squared and d minus p i plus 1 squared should be minimum. So, the value of p i plus 1 should be so chosen that it is less than its square is less than d and it is closest to the value of d. And if you change it to another condition p i plus 1 minus root d is minimum you obtain what is called the nearest integer continued fraction. We will see it later in the context of Narayana maybe if we have time. So, now I am doing the Chakravala algorithm to reproduce the Euler Lagrange method. So, what are where where is it differing? To see where it is differing, it is differing these two places, these two rows which are uh, highlighted, those two rows are skipped in Chakravala. So, how do we see that? So, you remember this in the step 3, you have 5 minus 7 and the solution is 90 11, right. And now, what does Chakravala give us? 5 minus 7, 90, 11. Now, to 5, you could have added 2 or 9 or 16, but in the Euler Lagrange process, 9 is barred. 9 squared is 67, that is larger than uh, 9 squared is 81, that is larger than 67. So, you have to choose only 2, which is lesser than whose square is lesser than 67. So, amongst the allowed values, so here we have to put p i plus 1 to be 2. And here also 9 is appearing in this step. So, these are two steps here in Chakravala which are not allowed in the Euler Lagrange. In both these cases, epsilon is minus 1. Whenever p squared is greater than d, epsilon will be minus 1. That is the sign that a step in Euler Lagrange is being skipped by Chakravala at that point. So, the minus 1s are hallmarks of the Chakravala process. So, if we remember there what was the next step in Chakravala? Next step is 221 and the step after that is 1899. Remember these two, we are going to see the Euler Lagrange process here. So, 90 it comes to 131, then goes to 221, then goes to 1678, then goes to 1899. So, two extra convergents are added, two extra steps are added in the Euler Lagrange process. After all, historically it did come 500 years or 600 years after the Chakravala process. So, it has to have that much more weightage in it. So, the square root of 67 can be expressed as a simple continued fraction, it will look like this. Written as a semi regular continued fraction, it will look like this. So, the period here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The period here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, two steps are eliminated in 67. So, we can look at the great the old friend 61. So, in the Euler Lagrange process, it will take 22 steps, Chakravala would have taken 14 steps, uh, but actually you do not need to do all the 22 steps. The simple continued fraction will terminate here when you get minus 1, k is equal to minus 1. So, it is a uh, square root of d which has a odd period. So, Chakravala is indeed a hot subject. So, <laughs> so it has an odd period, you are getting this minus 1, it will take 11 steps and to get that 11 steps, 1, 2, 3, 4 extra steps uh, Euler Lagrange adds, Chakravala will come in 7 steps instead of 11. So, this we can see by looking at the two continued fractions. Ah, the simple continued fraction has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 entries for 61, just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 entries in the Chakravala. So, it the period has 7, that is this has 7 steps, this has 11 steps and these precise 4 minus 1s are appearing. Those are precisely the points 
where the p i is crossing root d uh, p i squared is crossing root d. Okay. So, we have said enough about the uh, comparison of the two, we will say something in the end. So, Krishna Swami Iyengar then does various things that people normally do with the continued tractions. Uh, he first showed that the Euler Lagrange uh, formalism can be viewed as a modification of the Chakravala and he also showed that Chakravala can be viewed as a generalization of the continued fraction. Instead of using a simple continued fraction, you use a semi regular continued fraction where plus 1 and minus 1 are both allowed. Now, to give a direct algorithm for uh, the he called this uh, continued fractions that come in Chakravala as Bhaskara continued fractions. Nowadays, they are called the nearest square continued fractions. So, they can be called Bhaskara or the nearest square continued fractions and he gave a general rule that whenever you have a quadratic cell, I explained to you the simple continued fraction algorithm. Take the integral part, subtract the integral part from the number, take the reciprocal part, again take the integral part, subtract that from the number. So, like that gone, that is the simple continued fraction algorithm. So, for the Bhaskara continued fraction, he gave an algorithm. Uh, not for a general real number, he gave the algorithm for a quadratic cell because that is where the Chakravala process is appearing. It is appearing in the context of a root d. So, if you write root d as a Bhaskara continued fraction, the total coefficients will come out to be quadratic cells like this. Now, see with a particular property that p and q and d minus p squared by q are integers which are prime to each other, that is called the standard form of the cell. So, at any step doing the Bhaskara process and doing the simple continued fraction process, how do they differ? So, to show that you take this quadratic side, write it this way, where a is the integral part of p plus root d by q. And you take this quadratic side, you write it as, just write it as a plus 1, whatever remains, you write it in the quadratic side form, that is how it will look. And so, Krishna Swami Iyengar said, if p prime squared minus d is less than p double prime squared minus d or when they are equal, if q is less than 0, choose a and set epsilon is equal to 1. In the other case, choose a plus 1 and set epsilon is equal to minus 1. And then he showed the relation between the quantities which appear in the Chakravala algorithm and the quantities this k and the q which appear in this continued fraction expansion. So, you choose a when p prime squared minus d is less than p double prime squared minus d. That is all that. Uh, okay. Next, he also studied uh, the periodicity properties of the uh, continued fraction. Now, just look at this. Uh, let us look at the case of 61. You see there is a complete periodicity here a 1 to a h minus 1, a h minus 1 to a 1 and a 2 a naught, a 1 to h minus 1 a h, a h minus 1 to a n and a 2 a naught. So, similar periodicity exists for the Bhaskara continued fraction also uh, for most of the situations which Krishna Swami Iyengar called as type 1, where certain condition does not happen, certain kind of complete quotients do not occur, the Bhaskara continued fractions have the same symmetry. But in some particular cases, they have a more complex symmetry and these are examples where the symmetry is more complex 29, 53, 58, 97. The Bhaskara continued fraction does not have uh, the kind of symmetry that the simple continued fraction has. It has a more complex symmetry. Similarly, one can identify when you are doing uh, the continued fraction expansion when the midpoint occurs, Euler had identified that. Uh, so, similar midpoint criterion have been found out in recent times. Uh, Krishna Swami Yengar did not write it uh, in his time. In the last 5, 6 years, there are many others who are working on this kind of problem. They have identified the midpoint. In fact, this entire subject of x squared minus d by 1 squared is an equation which is of great interest even contemporarily. One is it is a very, uh, it is one of those uh, algorithms which are non polynomial time. That is uh, the amount of time that is taken to solve this in general is of the order of d times uh, e to the power square root of d. So, it is a non polynomial kind of an algorithm. So, there is even now a 
quantum algorithm by Hallgren, uh, which will solve this in a polynomial time. Of course, that can be implemented only in a quantum computer, which may come in the next 200 to 300 years. Then <laughs> there are also <laughs> many other interesting properties of this equation. Several books are written. Uh, few of them do mention that Bhas uh, Brahma Gupta and Bhaskara did solve and some people say partially, fully. Some books do explain in a fairly nice way uh, the way the equation was solved by Chakravala. But the most important thing for us is that uh, the old method was indeed the best method. Uh, the Chakravala method, as I said, showed you does skip various steps. So, in that sense, it is optimal. Whenever you have an algorithm, one of the important thing you want to see is whether you are doing it in the minimal amount of number of steps. And uh, it happens in many cases that the period of the Euler Lagrange continued traction can even be double or almost double the period of the Bhaskara. I have given 5 cases. Here is a case where the period is 3 there, period is 5 in the case of Euler Lagrange. For Bhaskara, the period is 3. For 44, the Bhaskara is period is 4, the Euler Lagrange or the simple continued traction, the period is 8. It is indeed double the uh, number of steps. And if you see where it is happening, the number of negative signs are a uh, indicator of the number of steps which are being skipped. I am seeing you are plight, but uh, I have to complete this. Yes, sir. Does that mean that the initial feasible point at which the Bhaskara's thing starts ah. is closer? No, they both start from 1, 0. No, not that way. The, when they take the first integer a. No, even that is not so. The algorithm is uh, more optimal. It is allowing both p i plus 1 larger than square root of d yes. and p i plus 1 that is lesser I mean. than. Yeah. So, allowing both the possibilities. That's so, true. it makes you go closer in no, a sir. more nicer way. Fine. But okay. even this uh, kuttaka, even this, you see in each of this step, what I was doing is I was taking the reminder. Instead of it, I can do the take the nearest integer. Then, the, the number of steps needed in reducing even a rational number into a continued fraction will be less. Uh, it will be less than the number of steps needed when you are always taking the lower uh, the, the divisor to the remainder to be positive. The remainder can be taken to be both positive and negative to reduce the number of steps. So, that is what is being systematic, but it cannot be done arbitrarily. What Donker and Wallace did was they tried to do plus and minus arbitrarily. Bhaskara or Jayadeva or whosoever discovered Chakravala prior to him had a systematic algorithm for doing this. Now, there is another interesting property uh, discussed by a famous Swedish mathematician Selenius that the issue is this whenever there is a sequence of what are called the unit quotient, we will go to the previous step, then you will see the moment I am able to reach. Okay. Take the simple continued fraction, you see there is a set of 1, 1, 1, 1 appearing here, right. Whenever these are par these partial quotients, whenever such 1s appear, the Chakravala get rid of, gets rid of them. So, these are called unisequences. Here there is a unisequence of length 4. Here also there is a unisequence of length 3 followed by unisequence of length 3. Here there is a unisequence of length 6. So, whenever there is a unisequence of partial quotients, so whenever this A0, A1, A2 that you are see seeing, when they become 1, uh, Chakravala kills them. The, that step. So, uh, okay. So, whenever you have a uni sequence of partial quotients of length n, the Chakravala process skips exactly n by 2 steps if n is even and n plus 1 by 2 steps if n is odd. So, that is at the heart of the Chakravala process. And uh, Selenius, uh, who sort of studied these uni sequences in great detail, the Swedish mathematician I was telling you. Uh, he showed that the remaining convergence are actually the optimal convergence in the sense that b i modulus a i minus b i root d, they are minimal. So, of the n plus 1 convergence possible, Chakravala picks out the closest convergence and throws away the ones which are not that close. Of, of course, even simple continued fractions, all convergence are fairly close. But Chakravala picks up the ideal ones or the most optimal ones amongst them. And that is what Selenius showed and he generalized the theory to what are called optimal continued fractions for arbitrary real numbers. So, recently uh, Matthews and uh, there is a group in Australia who are working on Chakravala systematically. 
they were the people who showed the midpoint criteria and things like that. So, they have tried to estimate by computer simulation, uh, take the ratio of number of steps taken by Euler Lagrange and the uh, number of steps taken by the Chakravala algorithm, divide one by the other and the ratio is converging to something like log of 1 plus root 5 by 2 or 0 0.694 etcetera. So, something like 30 percent uh, saving is uh, what uh, could be achieved. There is a great uh, mathematician called D. N. Lehmer, about 60, 70 years ago he was uh, known as a one of the pioneers in uh, computational number theory. So, he wrote in mathematical reviews in 1940s, early 41 or 42, a review of the paper of uh, Professor Krishna Swami Iyengar. Incidentally, Professor Krishna Swami Iyengar is the father of a more well known figure A. K. Ramanujan, the English professor, former professor of English in Chicago. So, he wrote that not only does it destroy the symmetry that the simple continued fraction have and the few steps that it seems to gain are not really worth the amount of uh, destruction of the beautiful theory of the uh, <laughs> simple continued fractions that uh, we have arrived with. In fact, uh, more or less a similar comment is made by the great mathematician Andre Weil uh, in his uh, book on history of uh, number theory. Andre Weil even says that uh, this name Pell's equation is very convenient because it is very definitive, I do not know what it means and so we have to continue using it uh, while referring to this uh, beautiful equation. Anyway, so uh, this is the kind of estimate, numerical estimate, perhaps some theoretical estimates can also be made for the optimality. So, these are Krishna Swami Iyengar's papers, the last one appeared in the Journal of Mysore University in 1941. Uh, this is Andrew Vail's monograph on uh, history of number theory, this is the famous paper of Selenius. He has written three, four papers in uh, German and uh, I think Swedish also earlier. This is the paper of uh, Matthews, Robertson and White and this group has several papers on uh, nearest square continued fraction and Jacobson and Williams, so they are experts in uh, the study of Pell's equation. This is a book which runs to about 700 pages uh, in the discussion of Pell's equation. So, it is a very interesting subject. I have tried to present you uh, what is the mathematical sort of heart of the Chakravala process which goes back to uh, Jayadeva and Bhaskara. Narayana also has something to say on it which I will briefly try to tell you during the talk on Narayana. Thank you. If you have some brief questions, we will have quickly, we have two minutes. How do you think? How do you think that the Chakravala, you know, achieved optimality directly without going around? So, what's your feeling about it? No, no, not that way. I think uh, from the time of Brahma Gupta, they were worried about solving this equation, and they were not worried about any other theoretical principle, but trying to find out the best way of it, uh, solving the equation. I mean, you may discover other important mathematics as a byproduct. Uh, it is not a byproduct of some other mathematics that you do. And so, first Bhavana principle and then of course, this uh, nearest uh, square kind of a method and they were not aware of the okay. other theories, therefore, they could get at a method. It, this became known to the West, I mean there are speculations that Parma knew about uh, Bhaskara solution because he is talking about the same example x squared minus 61 y squared is equal to 1, but uh, that link one does not know. Uh, but the first time that uh, the uh, modern European scholars came to know was when Colbrook translated Bhaskara's Bija in 1817. After that, many European scholars did uh, look into Chakravala. Hankel, one of great mathematicians of 19th century and major historians, in fact, praised it. He said that the, the prior to Lagrange, there was nothing in the history of uh, number theory that was achieved, uh, which is similar to this and all that. Uh, but after that, I think the only systematic major investigation which took Chakravala seriously as a alternative to the standard, because there are many books just write that this, this is same as the Euler-Lagrange method, this is same as the continued fraction expansion. So, it took the heart of a great uh, mathematician like Krishna Swami Iyengar with his, uh, he was very clear that Bhaskara was doing something unique and nice and beautiful and he went into the heart of it and spent about a decade of his active mathematical life in analyzing it and it is to him that we owe all this uh, uh, beautiful analysis of the Chakravala process of Bhaskara. Thank you.